When it comes to D'Lo and Austin Reeves, they're two guards who are able to coexist when Braun's not there, by even though they're not athletic, right? They're not crazy athletic in comparison to their competition. And so the skills, like little things right here, is y'all got to understand and pick up on as unathletic guards. That's going to make the game easier for y'all. And so right here with Austin Reeves, understand, right? He got that first screen, don't got nothing there. But once he gets off this screen, y'all got to understand how to use y'all peripheral, right? Because once he gets here, all the variables he has to be able to interpret at this time in real game speed. How quick is Danny going to chase? How is Brooke Lopez showing? What is Giannis doing on this weak side? What is Beasley doing over here? What is Middleton going to do, right? And so you can't try to look at one thing. You got to make sure you're able to see the whole floor, and then that's where you make your reads. And so what ends up happening here, Hashimura cuts along this baseline. He finds that. Whole defense back was turned. He gets that dime. Use your all peripheral. Don't hyper-focus on one thing because it's going to eliminate your ability to make the best play. When you play as a player who's not the fastest, the key is understanding the agility aspect of the game and identifying movements, reading movements, so you can be able to make reads and plays. And so when Reeves gets off the screen, right, Connaughton is going to be out to play. I now must read Bobby Portis. Can I get left or will I be able to even split possibly? And all this read is, is Reeves understanding that once he gets in front of Portis, he's now taking away that ba that sideline, right? That baseline. So now, boom, I could get into the middle of the floor. Brooke Lopez is out the paint, shot blocker, because you got AD at the top. I get that late at the rim. Look, the thing is with D'Lo as well, right? A lot of players question how they must play in the mid-range because the way D'Lo plays in mid-range, right? Because he has an unorthodox shot in those areas. And so now... D'Lo, he gets a switch with A.J. Green. And notice what he does to be able to maximize the mid-range game. He does all the work on the ground by using little things like that. That chicken wing. And notice how much his space is going to create. That much space. And how does he even have that much space? It's because with that off-arm movement, that little nudge to create that separation, he got Green off balance. And while he's off balance trying to find his feet, D'Lo now uses his quick pull up and release to shoot over the top before he can even get a hand despite the fact he barely even jumps and he still shoots at one motion he had that last attack on aj green right who would he call up same matchup you gotta play smart if it ain't broke don't fix it and so now he's about to do another thing that's extremely manipulative with him not being as fast as athletic as his competition right so now he gets aj green right that right there that hezzy right there cooked him and now he ended up getting that foul. Just really watch what it did, right? Got to slow it down, right? Really notice. Because he, as soon as he got this switch, this hezzy right here, notice what AJ Green does, right? He's laterally stepping, laterally sprinting so he could be able to stay in front. And what he does now, gets to a stop. His arms come down. And once that happens, D'Lo, rip through once the hands get there, he gets that foul, right? Manipulating that. Anytime you see D'Lo get to a point where he has to make a decision and has a chance or opportunity to make a pass, he's going to do this, right? He dribbles right here. He's going to make sure that dribble gets hang and he can throw the ball in rhythm of his dribble, right? Because what that's going to allow him to do is that as soon as he sees the gap, he's ready to fire that ball through. And he's not wasting any time and giving the defense more time to get back into the play. And now you're going to see that going even more going forward. But y'all got to make sure y'all add that. When y'all know y'all have a chance to be able to make a pass, make sure you hang that ball so you don't have any delay from when the ball has to get thrown to your teammate. Anytime there's a screen about to come up, this game right here is a power complex of who's more patient, right? And so it's a matter of will the ball handler be patient enough to let the screen go there and get set? Or will the defender be so impatient that they jump the screen, right? And now watch what happens. Beasley jumps. You just got to let the defense do the work for you sometimes. And now you reject. And what ends up happening? You just manipulate the drop coverage. He gets to his flow and gets that bucket. You got to stay patient. And now D'Lo is now going to tap into what allows him to be able to get his shot off with a minimal jump and not being athletic. Right? So notice, on the ground, he's doing his work. Leading with that off arm. So now once Malik Beasley has already broken his base, lead him create all that space and now this quick release that you just see out of D'Lo right y'all got to understand if you want to be able to develop that the ultimate key is understanding that I cannot try to go to the gym and be a below average shooter at this point in time 
and try to shoot that fast immediately. You must master the slower speeds before you're able to take your shot to the quicker speeds. Because once you master the slow, then you can build yourself up to the quick. Because it's showing you that you control all the movements throughout the entire shot. And then that's what's going to allow you to be able to have that quick release. And so that's why you see D'Lo shoot at so many different speeds. Now D'Lo was hot. You've seen him hit three straight threes over on this screen. But now pay attention to Austin Reeves. Because with all the gravity that D'Lo has being hot... And now get into a pick and roll with Anthony Davis, who already has his own gravity because of his roles. What's, watch what the help defense is about to do, right? Everybody turns their head and forgets who they're even guarding. So what does Reeves do in the situation? He was about to go set a flare screen if necessary, but he doesn't touch Malik Beasley because that would have alerted him that he's moving, right? So he just simply relocates to the top. And now before you know it, Malik Beasley is way too late. He gets that bucket. Off ball movement is something y'all could add to be able to get buckets, even not being super fast or having a crazy amount of bounce. And so when it comes down to finishing as a guard, this is one of the finishes that y'all must have, especially when you're playing downhill with handoffs, pick and rolls. You need this right here, right? Which is same foot, same hand floats. It's vital, right? Because when you get yourself to the point where you must make this read, whether I got the pocket pass or I may shoot and you're in close quarters like you are here, you need to be able to go off whatever foot you just stepped off of. You don't have time to be able to time the opposite foot to get off. And so you need that. And now he ends up getting fouled going to the free throw line. It may seem unorthodox, but once you get used to just jumping same foot, same hand, it feels normal. This third quarter, D'Lo was hot. Right, but you don't even understand how D'Lo moves, how he plays. It's extremely unorthodox. Now, watch what he does when Giannis is in this drop. Right, now he ends up getting right, chest is down, seems as if he's gonna go and attack. But notice how he picks up and gets into a shot. Notice, right hand, left, right, inside, quick pickup. A lot of players go right hand, right, left, hazy pull. He went right hand, left, right to the inside, shot over the top of Giannis while he's in that drop, and that's tough to guard because he doesn't even know how to time to contest that shot remember remember what i was talking about before with d'lo extending how long he hangs the ball to be able to make plays watch this right here right he throws us to the left hand hangs that finds the exact gap necessary he sees the shit way beforehand because once he gets to this spot here where Giannis is up high he's stepping up content is going over he hangs this so that as soon as he's in the in range of this gap, as soon as he's in sight of that gap, I throw the ball straight into it. Because split seconds later, that's a miss, right? That's a turnover. And so now AD just gets to his float game as a big, which is what all bigs also need. This is one thing on defense you could do and not need any bits of athleticism. You just need to play smart, right? So Reeves gets switched on to Brooke Lopez. And now with Brooke Lopez over here trying to seal him, and now with Chris Middleton ripping over, to the baseline, what ends up happening? Reeves, all right, I gotta leave Lopez, I gotta help. Now Giannis on the roll as well. Giannis is there, we know what Giannis gonna do, he gonna jump. So what does Reeves do? Get me a charge. You don't need to be athletic to get a charge, you just need to have mental fortitude and have that toughness. At this point in the game, the Lakers then came back, they down five, right? I just want you to understand the body language of all players on the floor after this shot by AD, right? Notice how everybody's gonna get down the floor. And you can just simply tell that not just the Lakers are tired, Milwaukee is also tired. You got three players walking back, right? You got three players walking back. And so now from the perspective of the Lakers, you got D'Lo and Chris Middleton once again. Everybody's standing, everybody's stationary, everything's stagnant. They just watch them do his thing. And ultimately, they, the Lakers end up getting a stop. And let me tell you this right here. Being an unathletic player doesn't mean you can't be conditioned. Because conditioned... It chips into athleticism, but it's something as to which you have direct control over. And so this is where the conditioned player must take advantage, where they must capitalize on situations of tired defenses. And so what ends up happening here with Reeves, screen occurs, boom, they drop back, shot. He ain't tired, I ain't tired, and I'm gonna get my bucket because y'all miscommunicated because you couldn't even catch your breath because you're so tired. Y'all gotta get conditioned. And that's one way as to which is gonna keep y'all in games for longer amounts of time because your coach knows you can play harder for longer 